Okay, it's going to be a classic review of NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 2015 from the Barclays Center. And, uh, yeah, you know, th this is a show that I've slept on for a long time. I, f I finally got around to seeing it. But, you know, maybe now is a good time to do it because, you know, Bailey and Sasha Banks are, um, you know, officially going to feud now. And, um, you know, I, I think, th yeah, I think there's a good chance they might main event uh, Night of Champions or Class of Champions. Uh, but we'll see what happens there. But, yeah, man, this was... Uh, you know, 15,000 at the Barclays Center, you know, right before SummerSlam 2015. And, uh, yeah, man, it was just, it, it, it just felt like a huge turning point for uh, women's wrestling. I, I think when you look back at the, in the history of the business, I, I think you could always look back to the show, especially within the WWE, as like the turning point uh, for women's wrestling. And, um, yeah, man, but uh, th this this was kind of a gutsy thing to, to accomplish. It was a huge accomplishment because, it, you know, this is the first time they really drew, like, that many people uh, and an NXT show. They did about, like, 15,000 fans. And, um, yeah, I, I, I believe, I, I think Bailey even said in the documentary that, like, this is the first time in NXT that, you know, they were able to wrestle with uh, over 300 fans uh, in attendance. But... Uh, yeah, let's just get down to the first match tonight. Yeah, Jushin Thunder Liger, the uh, the legend, uh, taking on Tyler Breeze. Uh, re really fun matchup right here. Obviously, Liger got a ton of respect from Corey Graves to all the fans in, in attendance. And yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it was a um, smart move to put him on this show. Uh, you know, Liger is a huge attraction. I went to the, uh, you know, some of the New Japan East Coast stuff, you know, back in the day. And, you know, Liger was on those shows. And I, I remember, like, a lot of people would just go just to see Liger. So, you know, that, that that's a good way to just get extra, you know, people in the seats. So, uh, yeah, j just a great way to start off the show right there. Uh, also, you had the next up, you had the Vaud, Vaud Villains, uh, Aiden English and uh, Simon Gotch. Uh, taking on Blake and Buddy Murphy with uh, with Alexa Bliss. So yeah, man, it, it like like looking back at this show, it, should, it was just really interesting to see, you know how uh, you know five years ago the the differences with a lot of these uh, characters because a lot of these uh, names have made it up on the main roster or have went to AEW or are still into WWE. So uh, you know the, the Vaude villains, I think they're kind of yeah, I mean. I think in 2016 they eventually they made their way to SmackDown, but I'm not sure if they're still on the main roster right now. So you have Blake and Murphy, the tag team with Alexa Bliss. That you know, so Buddy, you're seeing Buddy Murphy on Raw right now in a big storyline with the Mysterio family. Last night, you know, getting beat down by the uh, Mysterio family, but uh, on this show, yeah, you know, I didn't even realize he was with. Uh, the company for this long, but Alexa Bliss looked a little bit different. There was something like off, of, not off, but just she, she just you could just tell she's she's definitely kind of enhanced her look uh, since then. At that time, she was more of a bitch, you know, type of heel, uh, you know, manager, really kind of uh, you know bossing everybody around. But yeah, th this is a good match. I thought the Vaude Villains really looked good. The fans got behind them. Th this is just a good short, uh, you know, hot tag match right there. Probably the third best match of the night. Uh, next up, we had Apollo Cruz taking on uh, Ty Dillinger. Um, yeah, man. So it's it's been a long time since uh, Ty Dillinger's been in the uh, you know NXT. At the time, he was pretty over. You know, he was doing the perfect ten thing. There was a time where Ty Dillinger had a lot of su support. You know, he's a southpaw. He had a he has a unique style. Um, and then Apollo Cruz. Um, I don't know, man. Like he. he it, it's weird like he's been around for five years already in the wwe or, or nxt and it's like you know i i never really got the feeling that i got from apollo cruz that i got from him and evolve when i first saw him in evolve or maybe it was dragon gate usa i was i was like blown away. i just thought he stood out there you know a lot more like it, it feels like in the wwe or even in nxt it, it, it kind of just feels to me like he's just another guy it's kind of weird saying that, but it it just it just definitely does feel like that. I just felt like he stood out so much more. Like like when you, when you saw him in Evolve, you're like, man, who's this machine? But yeah, th it didn't get too much time. This might have been the weakest match of the night. I I, I don't know, man. I, I think Apollo Cruz has a lot of potential. I I just I don't know. I I just I just haven't felt what I've felt when I first saw him. But um, next match, you had Samoa Joe actually taking on Baron Corbin. 
Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but this might have been the first NXT takeover Joe was on. I I, I felt like Joe got a great ovation. I I, th I think there was a lot of people there just to see Joe. Uh, I mean, the the reaction that Joe got came off great. The, the problem is he he's a, he's got a lousy opponent in Baron Corbin. Uh, Corbin kind of came off like more of an outcast. Uh, he, he came off like someone that couldn't, I, they, they talked about how he couldn't stay in the NFL because he started, you know, he would always end up getting in fights with his teammates. And I, I think that's what they like about Corbin, though. I, th I think they like his attitude. They, they like the tension he could create with, um, you know, a lot of the people that he, he, he works with. I, I think that's why Vince or whoever's in charge of the company, I, th I think that's why Corbin's kind of made it as far as he's made it so far. But in terms of wrestling wise, I, I just I just I just think I think he brings his opponents down. I I just think it's tougher to have a good match with him in the ring than without him in the ring. That's how his matches come off to me. Like he, he doesn't make he doesn't make um you know good wrestlers stand out like he like like if, if he's in the ring with Joe or if he's in the ring like we just saw with Matt Riddle, I I, I feel like the, the, the matches get worse. That so that's the problem I have with Corbin. But, uh, you know, Joe goes over, you know, the, the fans really love the ending, but the match as a whole, you know, for a Samoa Joe match, even at that time in 2015, it was just kind of below uh, standards. But I will say this, I, I, you know, when you watch this thing back, you just say, man, you know, it, it, it would have it would have been, you know, it would have been cool to see how Joe would have fared, you know, back in the uh you know, maybe 2005 through 2010, you know, the, the previous decade, it, it would have been interesting. I, I think there was a lot of hesitancy on Joe's part that he was going to end up like Umaga or that he wasn't going to be able to, you know, have the freedom he did. But I, I, would, I would say that Joe's career in WWE, it hasn't been that bad. I mean, it hasn't, it, it wasn't what it was, you know, in Ring of Honor or even in TNA. But, you know, I, I think Joe could definitely be proud of a lot of the stuff that he's done. And, I, you know, I, I'm really happy that he made the transition to being a commentator and he was able to find something that he was, you know, he's always been great on the mic. So I think it's been a great transition for Joe. I think, you know, I, I don't think Joe's run in the WWE was overwhelmingly successful, but I, I would say that um, it's been more positive than negative. I, I think you can say that. All right. So the all right, so the whole reason we're doing the review here is uh, Bailey versus Sasha Banks. Um, you know, the. You know, I didn't put this on the list because I, I didn't see it yet. You know, back at that time in 2015, I think in the summer of 2015, I don't think a lot of people really had the WWE Network yet. You know, I, I, I think a lot of people were still kind of catching up to the technology. And um, I remember that first year, I was always having problems with it. And a lot of it, you know, it's just, you know, it's it's expensive, though. It's like sometimes if you don't have the right laptop, you don't have the right modem, you don't have the right router. You know, you, you might expect, you, you know, it's not a pleasant viewing experience. So it's, I just think at that time, a lot of people were still catching up to it. I don't even I don't think I had the network. I mean, you know, maybe my brother might have had it. But yeah, I don't even know if I had the network that summer. But uh, but yeah, bottom line is I slept on it and I, I feel, you know, I feel bad looking back on it because, you know, when you watch this thing back, uh, they even have the belly and the uh, Sasha um a uh, documentary on the network uh, about this match and it just it really just it was just really a special moment the, the, this is definitely one of the most important matches i think in the history of pro wrestling and it, it got me really emotional i'm not even gonna i'm not gonna lie to you guys like i started crying during the video package i had tears in my eyes um you know after the match was over it, it just i don't know like i just kind of felt you know a little bit of guilty i i, I felt a little bit bad you know that you know the that the women have always had it this tough in wrestling and it brought me back to um you know even being in school i i remember like you know i've like the the girls that i've been friends with throughout my whole life if you really got to know them uh well you know eventually they'll admit like they were a wrestling fan but you know in in school i just remember like girls were always um either hiding or were were, were afraid to admit they that they liked wrestling i think that that's one of the always problems that they've had and you know i think it was always one of those things how you know the parents saw the women become degraded especially with 
you know, uh, the Tory Wilson, Stacey Keebler, uh, Sable, uh, Terry Runnels. I mean, these these women in the past, they will participate in the, uh, you know, the, the thong matches, uh, gravy bowl matches, J- just kind of, you know, the, the women were kind of used as a way to sell sexuality. And I think that's what turned a lot of parents off in terms of bringing, you know, younger daughters to the show. So I, I think pro wrestling was always painted in a negative light. This the same way pornography was uh, painted in a negative light as well. Like, you know, you're not supposed to watch this shit. So I, I think that that was always one of the issues uh, in the attitude era going into the uh, ruthless aggression era that, you know, just, you know, like little girls like weren't supposed to watch wrestling. But, you know, I, I, I feel like and then you have the whole thing with the divas, you know, Trish did a lot for women's wrestling. But, you know, the after Trish left, we had a very dark period you know, from 2008 to 2012 or whatever, where you had these, uh, you know, divas champions and uh, the styles were very um, watered down. You, you had to, you know, a lot of hair pulling. It was just a, it was, you know, the, the divas were like closed in this box. And I, I feel like, you know, Bailey and Sasha and, you know, as a credit, Sarah Del Rey, credit, you know, a lot of the, the women that came up with them, the women's revolution girls, you know, the, the, the four horse women, whatever you want to call them, credit them for really, you know, busting this box open right here. And um, it, it just, I don't know, man, like it, it, the, the, they just, this was just a big fuck you to like a lot of people that thought, you know, that, um, you know, to a lot of the people that just looked at women's wrestling as like, you know, th- this is this is a big negative. They, it, it really was. I mean, they they they, re- they really just you know created magic here. You know, Seth Rollins had a tear in his eye after the match was over. Um, I, I'll, I'll tell you, man, just 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 the way Bailey was connecting with some of the younger fans, it just. You know what? What they do is they they just made you proud. Like like you like you like when you watch this match, you'll be, you know, this is the type of uh, these are the type of women where you can you can have a little daughter and you could feel you know confident and comfortable and bringing her to the show. You know, just just seeing Bailey go out there and um, you know hug you know the, the little girls that dress up like her. It just it was just you know stuff like that. It's just just a huge turning point, and um, it, it it just makes you look at you know like having a daughter in in a different light. Um, but you know Sasha Sasha here was actually the heel uh she was really like fully engraved in her character really over the top really thought she was you know she she was she was really on even back then just you know she was she was really hitting her stride as a heel Bailey was a little bit more trim back then she was like ripped and uh, a little bit more tone more athletic at at the time I, I think Bailey's become more of a character now but uh, when you watch this thing match, when you watch this match back, man, just uh, the, the crowd was just incredible. Like every step, like I think Sasha even said, like as soon as they stepped into the ring, like you, you, they knew that it was going to be great because they had the crowd with them, you know, every step of the way. The, the transitions to some of the submission, you know, STF cross faces were, were beautiful here. Uh, you know, Bailey, um, you know, busted out a couple of belly to bellies and, and there was a reverse Rana off the top rope where, I, you know, Bailey said she was afraid to do it. And Sasha actually had to talk her into doing it. She said, just, 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 uh, just, just throw your hands out as you, as you, as you reverse Rana and you'll be fine. So, uh, you know, to be that nervous and to be that, you know, hesitant in front of that type of a crowd and to actually be able to pull off the reverse Rana, it just had to be, man, um, it's just, it was just, just one of those, those matches that just, just had that, that special feeling behind it. So, uh, I, I thought the ending was great here. Um, just, just a very emotional match. I mean, it's just, uh, it was just, just, just a turning point. I, I don't really know if we've had a, a women's match within the WWE that, that has created, you know, this much, uh, inspiration, you know, the, this much, uh, uh, emotional, um feelings so so yeah man i'm sorry for sleeping on it but yeah it, it was great stuff to, to me like you know when you look back at this match like i i it, to me it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter if you're a man you're a woman if you could deliver a quality wrestling match uh, uh you know i enjoy i'll enjoy it no matter what i i think there's some people out there that just you know still you know feel a little bit negatively on women's wrestling i mean the the, the divas revolution it, it's had its ups and downs not every women's uh not every woman that has come into the main roster over the last couple of years has been you know great i would say but you know if, if if you could if you could deliver a match like this i i, I mean i i think everyone would stand back and admire them and you know just um 
you know, give it the respect that it deserves. Um, well, I mean, when you look back at the, you know, the the, the divas um, that came in in the early 2000s, like the Tories and the Stacys, you know, they, you know, they, they were great. You now, trust me, no, no one's a bigger fan than Tori Wilson than me. I mean, I, I think she's, I think she looks like a goddess. I think she's, she's extremely hot. But, um, but yeah, but let's be honest. I mean, she was really only there for her looks. Um, I, you know, if, if you were to ask me, can you find a Tori Wilson match or a promo that really <laughs> was worth uh, mentioning or checking in, checking out is, is probably not there. But I, I, I do think I think there's a place for both. I, I think if, if you want to use women in a sexual sense or a, in, 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 a, in a way to sell sex, I think that's fine. But also, I, I still think there's a place for women like Bailey and Sasha that, you know, they're great looking girls, but there's still girls that, that know how to wrestle uh, just as good as the guys or, or, or sometimes even better. So I, I think there's a place for both. And, you know, and, you know, they had a really tough time. You know, they, they had parents and friends that, you know, degraded wrestling and, and had, had said to them, like, oh, man, I, why do you want to get into that? Or why do you want to get, into, you, you, you know, when you think of, when you thought of the Divas in 2002, what do you think of? Like, you think of, you know, Trish and, you know, um, Terry wrestling in like a gravy bowl match. So uh, it, it's just, it, it's come a long way. And it's just, you know, when you watch this thing back, you see the emotion. It's just, man. This is um, this was definitely like if you want to look to the turning point, you know, th this was it right here. And then the main event, you have Finn Balor uh, taking on Kevin Owens in a ladder match for the NXT championship. Really underrated match. It, it, it wasn't like overly long, uh, but it did still get like an, enough time. Uh, you know, Owens, you know, I, I was thinking back to, to what Bret Hart said about Owens, like like this. This guy is just he's just he's just solid, man. And um, it's it's been really it's 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 been interesting to see how well Owens has been using the WWE. I, th I, th I think he's fit like a glove, to be honest with you. And I, and I agree with Brett. I I I think he's more of a uh, like Jim and Anvil Nightheart type. And you know, if, if anyone was hesitant that you know the WWE was going to use you know Owens look and his weight against him, I, I think they've been proven wrong. I think Owens has had a great run so far. You know, I th I think there's still a, a lot of room for growth and, and improvement as well uh Baylor at this time was just untouchable you know they had a good physical match you had exciting spots you had you know just, just drama that just definitely felt engaging it it, it didn't feel like a you know a, a ladder match just for the sake of it being a ladder match uh Owens just definitely had a great weekend there you know to, to main event uh the Barclay Center and then still to go out there I think he wrestled Claudio at or Cesaro at SummerSlam and and had a really underrated match with him it was just definitely a, a great weekend for Owens and uh, for NXT as well. I mean, just, you know, great double main event here. You know, they, when you look back at the show, it's I, I think the NXT takeovers are a little bit more well-rounded. You know, the the the, the undercard here was, was good, but I, I would say it wasn't like it wasn't like they were trying to knock it out of the park like like they eventually would do in years to come but you know just just awesome double main event and um you know just just a historical you know women's match and it, it, it's like the, the thing that i really took from it just to end the video is just like man it's like we we've, we've come a long way like like in in 20 years like since since the early 2000s as, as far as women's wrestling in the wwe it's like it's it's really it's really it's 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 went through a lot of changes and um it's it's a, a lot of it like when when Sasha and Bailey in the documentary were talking about how you know the divas were trained to wrestle a certain way, it's like man, I'm like that, that had to be a huge that had to be a huge headache to overcome, you know like the, the them actually trained they actually used to train girls on you know how to pull hair or how to wrestle like a diva, and um, yeah man but you know I I I don't think that there's no going back now I think so overall I do I think there's a place you know for a woman like. Tori Wilson or Stacey Keebler, Sable, there's a place for women like that. But, you know, with Sasha and Bailey, you know, there, there's there's also a place for great female wrestlers that can do that can, you know, cut great promos and still wrestle, you know, amazing matches. So, yeah, man, that's NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 2015, the very first one. And I'm out.